Dear friend, good morning. It is a real pleasure to stay with you in this uh, excellent meeting. And I would like to um, tell you something about our last research on maternal hemodynamics in preeclampsia and fetal growth restriction. Now, the main goal of the hemodynamic response of the pregnant state is to provide adequate uteroplacenta perfusion and nutrition to facilitate fetal growth and development. As you might see here, these are the variation that happens in maternal, maternal circulation, uh, differentiating from non-pregnant to pregnant patients. And you see how the cardiac output increases, the heart rate increases, the stroke volume increases, uh, while the systolic and diastolic blood pressure reduce, the total peripheral resistance decrease, they go down down to 1000, and uh, this is uh, the essential of the variation that happens uh, in maternal hemodynamics. Now, why this happen? This happened because pregnancy has a variation that reduces the vascular resistance, reduces the blood pressure, the mean arterial pressure, increases the total body water, and this is all done to increase the amount of flow that will reach the, uh, um, that will reach the fetus and the placenta. In this drawing, you see here how goes the cardiac output. It is increases, it is the relation between stroke volume and heart rate, and you might see how nicely the cardiac output increases during pregnancy up to 16 weeks it reaches about the uh, seven liters uh, um, starting from five liters and the heart rate increases and the stroke volume increases as well and for this reason the parameter important which is the total vascular resistance decreases this is an important parameter that links together the mean arterial blood pressure and the cardiac output and you might see how nicely it decreases during gestation and it goes down at the bottom part um, at 20 weeks of gestation this is the moment in which the placental uh, uh, process of trophoblast invasion has got the most important part and this is important because this is the normal evolution of pregnancy the heart has other variations and the most important variation is an increase of the volume and an increase of the width of the ventricles in long run or heart letters this happens in uh, almost a couple of years of uh, training and this increase is only the 20 percent but if you look at what happens in pregnancy then you might see that this goes up to 40 percent and it takes only nine months to arrive this is due mostly to the uh, um, um, progesterone to the increase of the volume fluid to the increase of the heart rate to the increase of the plasma volume now most of these studies have demonstrated the evolution of normal adaptation of maternal cardiovascular uh, uh, system during pregnancy and you might see in the first second and third trimester how the modifications appear to the stroke volume to the cardiac output and to the uh, width of the left ventricle then we have related this modification the total vascular resistance with the uh, evolution of the uh, uterine vessels uh, the resistance in the uterine arteries uh, is something that is important uh, during pregnancy when we have uh, a nicely dilated uterine arteries so a good flow to the placenta the total vascular resistance are low when we have abnormal uterine arteries, non-dilated, so reduced flow to the placenta, the total vascular resistance are high. How we perform 
perform most of the studies. We perform most of the studies using this device, which is called ASCOM, Ultrasound Cardiac Output Monitoring. This is a non-invasive assessment of the maternal cardiovascular evolution. There is a probe that lets us evaluate the ascending aorta low velocity, and this is linked to the ability of the machine to measure uh, the um, dimension of the outflow of the aorta and relating this with the blood pressure we are very easy uh, to calculate the total vascular resistance the cardiac output the uh, idea of learning how to use this machine is one week in one week time you'll be able to do that so you have uh, inside the machine uh, uh, software that will calculate uh, the uh, area of the uh, uh, aortic valve and then you measure with the uh, velocity that you measure with your probe, the cardiac output and the stroke volume um, through the heart rate. And having this linked you know, with the blood pressure, you might be able to calculate the total vascular resistance. These are the uh, stable component of the afterload given by the transverse diameter of the resistant vessels. And this is the most important parameter that we use because it links together central and peripheral uh, evaluation. Now, what in the maternal hemodynamics in pregnancy than have a fetal with growth restricted baby. This is extremely important because this is the real new that we can have and we can build in our uh, activity in obstetricians. Now we have demonstrated in the past uh, that there is a difference between patients that have a normal fetal growth and a growth restricted baby. In normal fetal growth, the mother has an heart rate that increases, while the mother that carries a fetal growth restricted baby has a heart rate that is not increased. The cardiac output is increased in normal fetal growth, in fetal growth restriction is not increased. The total vascular resistance decrease in normal fetal growth, while they go up in fetal growth restricted babies. The ventricular mass is increased in normal fetal growth, it goes down, it's not increased in patients uh, having a, a, a fetal growth restriction. This is very important because this happens without any modification of blood pressure. So it's something that you might not be able to see if you don't explore the maternal hemodynamics. And here you see uh, a bar chart um, looking at the difference in total vascular resistance between patients with normal evolution of pregnancy and patients with carrying a growth restricted baby. He will, they will have an increase of total vascular resistance and uh, the low cardiac output is uh, the uh, uh, relative importance that increases the total vascular resistance. So these patients are considered as empty. They have not had the increase in plasma volume circulation that have the normal patient. And if you look at the preload data, you will see that the growth restricted baby has something that modifies the diameter of the left atrium. This is absolutely increased in the normal patients. This is very low in the patient carrying a growth restricted baby. As if in the first, the second trimester pathophysiology, these patients have not an increase of the plasma volume, they have not an increase of the distension of the left heart's atrial uh, uh, dimension, and so they will not be able to increase and to produce blood flow to the placenta. So we might see that the inadequate preload increase is probably due to a lack of hemodilution process and the lack of plasma volume expansion. So this is what happens in normal patients. An increase in preload will increase the left atrial diameter and the left ventricle diameter. This will not happen in patients with a growth-restricted baby. And 
For this reason, the cardiac output is increased in patients with normal in babies because we have an, uh, um, both the increase in heart rate and stroke volume. While in the red bar chart, you will see that what happens in patients carrying rotisserie baby, they will not have an increase in heart rate, they will not have an increase in stroke volume, and the cardiac output is low. If you don't explore maternal hemodynamics, you will not be able to find this because these patients are apparently normal and have no symptoms. What happens in the cardiac morphology? This is what happens in the patient carrying the adequate growth baby, and you will see an increase in the inside part of the left ventricle, and the, the total vascular resistance are low, the cardiac output is increased, and the, the quantity of the weight of the ventricle is increased. In the mother carrying a growth restricted baby, there is not an increase in the ventricle dimension. And so the cavity of the left ventricle is small, the cardiac output is low, and the quantity of flow that goes from the ventricle to the placenta is reduced. Now, let's take an example. Uh, what is the maternal hemodynamics in a patient with a fetus small for gestational age, different from growth restricted babies? You see here, we have two different kind of possibility of growth. This is the baby that stop the velocity of growth during pregnancy. This is the baby that follow his line of growth during pregnancy. This is an abnormal patient. This is a normal patient that will bring back to a normal a patient uh, to delivery with a low uh, birth weight, but the normal baby. And what happens? This has been described in the past by a study, and we have this defined that the abnormal maternal cardiac function precedes the clinical manifestation of fetal growth restriction. So we be able to differentiate the patient carrying a small for gestational age has a normal cardiac output and a normal uh, uh, and a reduced total vascular resistance while the baby the mother that carries a fetal growth restricted baby has uh, um, increased total vascular resistance and uh, low cardiac output and you see here the differentiation very interesting this is the abnormal condition of the growth restricted mothers. This is the normal condition of the mother carrying a small for gestational age. And if you go to see what happens in the plasma expansion, you will find that the small for gestational age behave almost as a normal patient, while growth restricted mothers have an increase of total vascular resistance very high, up to 1,700, and this is the uh, evident uh, abnormal maternal hemodynamics adaptation. And you will might to find this with the, the uh, evolution of the relation between the total vascular resistance and the weight centile at delivery. Uh, if you look even what happens to the diameter of the uh, left atrium, you might be able to see what is the difference. This behaves as a normal patient, this behaves in an abnormal condition, and uh, the uh, um, diastolic evolution of the um, uh, parameter of the uh, heart are abnormal in the growth restricted mothers, according to uh, the uh, hemodynamics. So we can summarize that small for gestational age behave as normal mothers with an increase of heart rate, an increase of cardiac output, a reduction of total vascular resistance, and an increase in ventricular mass, while the mother that carries a fetal growth restricted have a reduced heart rate, a reduced cardiac output, an increase in total vascular resistance, and a reduced ventricular mass. We might see the example between Lisa and Sarah. These are two nice young women that uh, have uh, a um, pre-pregnancy uh, condition. These are normal in both um, patients. Then they might have a starting pregnancy in the first trimester. 
Lisa has an excellent cardiovascular adaptation. There is an increase in preload that will increase the circulation, while Sarah has a cardiovascular maladaptation and the cardiac output is reduced and the total vascular resistance are increased, uh, behaving differently between Lisa. This happens while you are not able to see it if you don't explore it with the machines. What happens? In the second trimester, both of them have a normal feeder growth, but Lisa has a normal cardiovascular function with an increase of cardiac output and a reduced total vascular resistance, and Sarah has an increased total vascular resistance and a low cardiac output. Both babies appear normal, but the mothers are already different, and this difference expands in the third trimester in which Sarah has a fetal growth restriction, while Lisa has a normal fetal growth. Lisa has a normal adaptation to pregnancy with an increased cardiac output and reduced total vascular resistance. Sarah has a reduced cardiac output and total vascular resistance increased. And the differences in fetal growth is now evident. But this was present before this appears. So the heart modification precedes the evaluation of the fetal growth. Now, there are possibility of some therapy we have explored in the past, giving some nitroglycide donors and plasma volume expansion. We have demonstrated that the might be able to influence the mother heart rate, the mother vascular resistance, and increase the fetal growth. And this is due to uh, the ability of the nitrogocyte donors uh, uh, to modify uh, the uh, vascular resistance in the mother. Uh, the nitrogocyte donors uh, uh, might have some potential pharmacological as expressed in fetal heart rate fetal growth restricted babies because they might take the venous part from the uh, reserve to the uh, normal circulation. But the important thing is that you might link together the NO donors with fluid therapy to increase the cardiac output, to increase the preload, and to reduce the afterload and reduce the total vascular resistance. Both of them must act together, otherwise they won't be able to have the results. And what are the results that we have had? These are two groups of patients. One is the group treated with no no donors and vascular expansion. One is the control group. You see that in the evolution, in the evaluation, at the beginning and after 15 days, no differences in, in blood pressure on systemic, systolic, diastolic, and mean blood pressure. And the differences are present in the total vascular resistance. The group treated with nano donors and va plasma volume expansion reduced the vascular resistance very significantly, while the control group has no differences. And this is related to what happens to the heart rate, which is increased, to the cardiac output, which is increased from 4 liters to 6 liters, and to total vascular resistance that goes from uh, differences. This is what happens to the baby. The diastolic flow in the umbilical artery reappears and goes from this very pathological condition to this normal condition and goes back to the perinatal results. Neonates grow more, gestational age of delivery is higher, delivery about 30 weeks of gestation is higher, and the possibility of having abnormality in the another period is reduced. So, if you use together NO donors and plasma volume expansion in this patient, you will enhance fetal and maternal hemodynamics, enhance fetal growth, prolong gestation, and reduce perinatal morbidity and mortality. Now, this medical treatment works even in patients that have gestational hypertension. The reduction of total peripheral resistances influences maternal and fetal complication. In this four uh, uh, treatment group, we observed 
that using NO donors and plasma volume expansion, uh, the uh, evolution of these patients was much better. The total vascular resistance reduced uh, while it remained normal in the other uh, in patients. So even hypertensive patients uh, might have a, a possibility of being influenced by the treatment with antihypertensive NO donors and oral fluids they will have uh, the possibility to reduce uh, the constriction of resistance vessels, to reduce uh, the, uh, um, to increase the venous capacitance and to increase the, uh, the uh, preload uh, um, uh, attempting to the underfilled vascular states. So important to use this, but important to use them after the maternal hemodynamics evaluation together with the increase of flow, the increase of plasma volume expansion and reduction of resistances. Now, uh, let's see what happens to this patient that comes to our attention. 28 weeks of pregnancy, fetal growth restrictions, absent and diastolic flow. The old doctor says, I've seen enough, it's time for a cesarean section. The young doctor says, we should perform an hemodynamic evaluation. We could buy some weeks and bring the baby in the hand of the neonatologist after the treatment. So ASCOM evaluation and patches evolution. And what happens? The doctor all said, how can I become a modern perinatologist? How can I identify cardiovascular adaptation? Do I need a cardiology? And the answer is no, you must do it on your own. The obstetrician must know this. How can I perform an homodynamic evaluation with the use of this ASCOM machine? Am I able to understand the homodynamic results? Yes, we have performed studies that will help you to understand and which treatment is required. Now we have published this um, uh, paper in which we describe the friendly help of, for clinical use of maternal hemodynamics. We have built the normality values for both trimester, first, second, and third trimester, of six important parameters of maternal hemodynamics. Heart rate, vascular resistance, cardiac output, enotropic index, PKR, and systolic volume variation. So we designed a kind of diamond, which says, tell you exactly where the normal values go and what is the normality. If we explore a patient that has high vascular resistance and low cardiac output, you will see that calculating the Zeta score, this will go to design something which is abnormal related to the normal evolution of pregnancy. And this is quite easy to understand, even to an unexperienced person that might be able to see these diamond done. So this is what happens. This is time zero. This is the abnormal evolution of the maternal hemodynamics in this patient. Quite easy to understand. All is uh, uh, modified in the pathological path. I have an increased afterload. The vascular resistance are high. I have a reduced preload. I have a reduced cardiac output. I will start my treatment with endo donor and vascular expansion. And what happens? And after one week, these parameters go better. And after two weeks, they go back to normal. And the old doctor said, it works. But sometimes you might find some patients that do not respond to the treatment. So they, they will not move from the expected values from time zero to one week or two weeks. And so the doctor said, it doesn't work. Now we can perform a C-section. And the answer is yes. So. If we evaluate what happens in the uh, differences between responder and non-responders, the important thing is that uh, neonatal weight is much higher here, neonatal weight centile much higher here, uh, the uh, risk of RDS is low, uh, the risk of um, parental nutrition is low, the deaths are low, uh, the infections are low, and so we have uh, an increase of in neonatal outcome uh, absolutely important. And so this is the, uh, the end. Hemodynamics effect of therapy 
and odonos plus plasma volume expansion will bring back the abnormal situation to normal situation. The resistance is, goes down to normal, uh, the heart rate increases, the cardiac output increases, the inotropic index ameliorates and the PKR goes back to normal. So we will be able to reduce the afterload, increase the heart rate, increase the preload, in reduce, increase the cardiac output, increase the inotropic index. All this can be done with the use of the, your evaluation of maternal hemodynamics with the ASCOM machine. And the PKR is one of the most important parameters that we use because this is the ratio between potential to kinetic energy ratio. And it might modify the uh, circulation from hyperdynamic which is in the uh, normal uh, situation of pregnancy, to hypodynamic, which is the abnormal situation of pregnancy. First trimester, second trimester, third trimester, the value of PKR should be around 20, 21, 22. The fetal growth restriction and the hypertensive patient have something about around 60, 65. The treatment will bring back the circulation from hypodynamic to hyperdynamic, and so give more possibility to be, have a normal placenta perfusion and a normal evolution of pregnancy. And one of the important thing is what happens to the fetus, it will increase growth. The uh, uh, collateral effect of the fetus, no. Does this therapy worse every time? It depends when you start, but you must follow it. And the last point is the possibility to follow the increase of flow to the fetus through the evaluation of the quantity of flow that goes through the umbilical vein. And the umbilical vein flow now can be calculated and we have demonstrated that there is a, a relationship clear between the total vascular resistance and the umbilical vein flow. As soon as the resistance are low, the umbilical blood flow is very high. If the resistance of the mother are high, the umbilical flow is low, and so the baby will not grow and will have some problems. So the conclusion is that the cardiovascular adaptation is fundamental for adequate utero placental perfusion. Women with pregnancy complication, uh, uh, pregnancy complicated by fetal growth restriction, have reduced cardiac output and increased total vascular resistance throughout pregnancy. Treatment of fetal growth restriction is aimed to improve vascular filling by increasing blood unit volume. The administration of endodonors and plasma volume expansion in pregnancy that have IUGR appears to be improved both maternal and fetal hemodynamics, inducing prolongation of gestation. Maternal hemodynamics assessment is very rapid to perform, easy to understand, and very useful. Please use it. And I must thank you for helping me all.